today I'm talking about. This is part two of filling out your W-4. We have been talking about withholding the amount, right amount of money. So at the end of the year, you don't owe or you don't have to pay. In other words, you get your money during the year rather than using the IRS as a bank and getting a large refund at the end. If you're a good money manager, you know it's best better to have your money now because of the time value of money. We learned in part one that claiming zero is not enough. If the second income puts you at a higher tax bracket, you will not be withholding enough on your W-2. So we see, we here we're gonna learn whatever additional withholdings or deduction we might need in order to make sure at the end of the year, we come even. Let us talk about additional deductions you might be eligible to claim. Now, this portion of it, I don't really recommend that you complete it and take the additional exemptions. Just because, like I said, I like that leeway. But however, if it's pretty significant, please then go ahead. For example, if you plan to itemize deductions, well, because of the new tax laws, a lot of people are not going to qualify to itemize. So it's not going to really apply to you. If you have... Um, home mortgage interest, charitable deductions, state and local income taxes, those are things you can deduct. The probability is most people's deduction, if they're married, is not going to be above 24400 If they're head of household, it's not going to be above 18350 And if they're single, married, and filing separately, it's not going to be above 12200 Those are the thresholds. Those are the standards that the government gives you. And then if you have anything above that, they do. you can itemize and claim that deduction. So let's say you, you're a very charitable person, you give a lot of income and you're head of household, so you had like 30,000 charitable contributions. So in other words, you do plan to itemize. So let's see how this is going to affect your W-4 withholding. So um, here you enter the estimated itemized deduction. So let's say we just said $30,000 is what we, we thought we we're going to do because we're going to have 30,000 charitable. And then... Here we'll enter with, we said we're married filing jointly from part one, so we enter the 24400 from here because it tells you what to enter for your filing status. And then if subtract line two from line one, if zero or less, enter zero. So we subtract line two from line one. We don't have a zero. We actually have 5,600. Then we enter an estimate of 2019 adjustments. So for you as a business owner, you have what you call the qualified business income deduction. Or if you're over 65, you also have an additional standard deduction for age or blindness. So let's say you're under 65 and you're a business owner who plans to make about, maybe you're, you're going to make $100, you know, and you get 20% of that. So the qualified business deduction will be $20. And then, so basically, you add lines three and four, which we five, six, two, zero. And then, if you have estimated income that is non-taxable, for example, exempt interest or anything, you can enter that there. So in this case, we have nothing. We don't have any non-wage income that's non-taxable. And then we subtract. If we had anything here, we'll subtract it. We have nothing, so we come back here and we say the five, six, two, zero. Oh. So we divide the amount on line seven by 4,200 and enter the result here. If a negative amount, enter in parentheses. So it's not a negative, it's going to be a positive. It's going to be one point something. So we'll just say one. So enter the number from the personal allowance exemption from line eight. So remember from part one, we had seven. Then we add lines eight and nine. So here, we'll stop here if we don't have any additional information, like we're not a two earner house, so we don't have another job. But that's not our case because remember we're married and we also have we also have a business. So we also have to take account of that. So, but if that was the case, we'll have stopped here and we'll go up here and enter eight because we had seven. But now our total allowance will be eight because we've taken into account the additional deduction. In the next video, I will show you how to take into account the additional income. Like what you see? Go ahead and click the subscribe button on the very bottom of this video. I look forward to seeing you in future videos.